Hello, everyone. It's time for my first post-surgery recording. Um, this is not actually the, well, not the first post-surgery recording. If, as you're watching this, the episode of the Anime Explorations podcast, where um, David, Tora, and I discuss the anime series um, My Love Story with Yamada-kun at level 999, will have gone out, and that will be the first thing I will have recorded after surgery. This is my first thing talking about the surgery and updates on a couple other things. Uh, as you can see, I still have a kind of bandage on the side of my head. There's a, I'll, we'll get into that in a minute. But in the meantime, um, first a quick update on the Polymega situation. Um, as of this recording, which is on the 26th of May, I have not received the Polymega back, but it has been shipped. Current tracking estimates has its arrival being as possibly the end of the week. So it will have, well, when I will have received it, will almost certainly be after the video goes live. At my best possible estimate is if it arrives ahead of schedule, it'll be on Thursday. So again, before the video itself will, uh, goes live. Um, once I receive it, I will try and get it set up properly. And then I will see about capturing gameplay footage from it so I can give an actual assessment of the final unit once it is operational. But I was able to get an RMA, got a shipping label, got it sent off. Now it's just a matter of waiting for it to arrive and seeing how well it works upon receipt. That out of the way, talk about the surgery and stuff. So um, this whole process took over, not over, it took two, but opened over the course of two days. The first part was the embolization, where what they had to do is because the area that needed to be operated on, like you should, you can see right away from the video that my, I don't have this big bulge on this side of my face anymore. Um, so because the area that was, in, that, that was causing the bulge was a growth involving a bunch of blood vessels, by nature of being blood vessels, they bleed. So I discussed this a bit in the previous video, but they had to do a embolization to stop the flow of blood to the, that area so they could safely remove them without excessive bleeding and without the, any bleeding impacting the ability to see what, you're, what they're doing. Um, I had thought at the time that they would be going in through the face, but no, uh, there'd be basically putting stuff in through a vein and then tracking the flow of the relevant material through the body until it reached the, the correct area. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And that meant going in through my leg. So what this meant for the procedure wise was I had to be up and awake for it. I was still anesthesiized, but I was not put out for it, which is what I somewhat anticipated happening. So... The good news is it was a boring procedure. I lay there on table while they did had re did repeated CT scans of me, um, as the material as the stuff they used for the embolization went in and they followed it all the way through the course over through my body until it reached the, the blood vessels in question. The bad news was it was also like it was not it was boring and since it was uneventful it was also not exactly a mentally stimulating experience. Like, I'm squeamish, I don't need a blow-by-blow -blow of what they're doing, but I also, like, need to have something, to, wanted to have something keep me occupied. Unfortunately, I couldn't, was not in a position to say, hey, um, can we get some, like, podcasts or an audiobook from my phone on uh, the listen to while we go through this? Not helped by the fact that, like, a not in some surprising number, the podcasts I listen to are on, like, Patreon-exclusive feeds. So I couldn't just say, oh, yeah, just uh, subscribe, just uh, put on um, the, the Next Lander podcast, because I'm on, the, I'm on the, the Patreon feed, so whatever they get is going to be, um, is going to have, if they, if they just do the public feed, it's going to have ads, and... I doubt they'd be like, oh yeah, you can you, know, you can pair your, your phone to our Bluetooth or whatever. Uh, I don't think that wasn't unlikely to happen. So instead, um, we had classic rock playing, which is okay. I listened to a lot of classic rock in my childhood. 
but it was kind of it was both like it was like uh I, I'm familiar with most of these. Um it was somewhat amusing that like the starting song and the ending song for whatever playlist or station they had while they're listening to it, uh uh while they're doing this, like we started with John Cooper Mellencamp and ended with John Cooper with John Mellencamp. And I was like, okay, I, I, it's a, a, a amusing curiosity only in the sense of um like oh it's the like same artist and I'm desperately trying something mentally to get through this. I want to say the ending song was Hurt So Good by John Mellencamp, which is an inch which unintentionally amusing choice. Um no Pink Floyd though, and thank and in particular no comfortably numb or anything like that, which would have also been an interesting choice. Um so you got through that the first day. The main side effects of this, as far as how I experienced them, was because they went in through the leg, uh, my leg was very stiff for the rest of the day. And I had to walk with the cane like that day, the day after, by like late Saturday, Sunday, I was more or less able to walk unaided. Then there was the procedure itself. Um, oh, quick note for the embolization that happened on OHSU up at the hill. And I was feeling decent enough after the procedure that I was able to eat something. So I had some of the food from up there. And the good news is, if you need to have a certain procedure at OHSU and end up having to eat there, the good news is OHSU puts considerable effort into having good hospitals, into having good food at the hospital. Um, I don't say good hospital food, but like, no, I need to actually kind of adjust the order of those words. Good food at the hospital. I had a turkey melt. It was quite delicious. And not just in the sense of, oh, I hadn't eaten anything all day, but also in the sense of, like, this is a good quality turkey melt. If I, if this was in the menu, in as a menu option at any of the cafeterias of any of the previous places I'd worked, I would certainly order it. Um, so that was quite pleasant. Then, uh, second day was on the waterfront. Oh, it's just you at the waterfront for the actual removal. And this one they put me out for, as for reasons I described, where they're going to make an incision, but you can kind of see the scar, you can still see the scar along there. Um, that's slowly going away. Uh, to make an incision, peel up a portion of my face, remove the, what we now know now is a benign tumor, and sew me back up and close it up um i was out for that thank uh, obviously that's something you want the patient to be out for i did end up being intubated um part of the reason for this is because my cpap for my sleep apnea i will do a separate video talking about sleep apnea and my getting diagnosed and that sort of thing but my cpap um the, the unit i use it used at the time uh, it was an over-the-nose unit, and it goes over the ears and they put it in the way of the area where the procedure was. My new one probably would have had similar problems, but not as bad, so they probably would have still had to intubate me either way. Um, but this left meant that I came out of this with, and it's actually still kind of lingering, a sore throat. It's gotten a lot better since then. And having this be during allergy season, uh, pollen allergy season isn't helping. Um, but that was literally a pain afterwards. Um, was not able, like, had some difficulty eating some solid foods afterwards, not just in a sense of like nausea, but also in a sense of like, uh, of, ha of not, of having difficulty swallowing. So, um, yeah, that's, that was after that. And recovery period was... I'm still technically as this recording going through a degree of recovery, but the, the next part of recovery after this was definitely close me up is they had a tube coming into a bulb, like the like sort of a... I guess you call it a vacuum process, because you have it... So you squeeze as all or as much of the air of it out, out of it as you can, and then you have the a port in your the back of your head behind the ear and a draining 
into that, which is, if it sounds gross, it is. Um, it was just, I did eventually, after a couple, after a day or so, feel a little more comfortable looking at it to get an idea of, okay, when does it need to be emptied? Does it need to be emptied like two to three times a day? But that, that's more a instance of, wow, the human mind is great at normalizing and becoming accustomed to things as opposed to, no, it's not gross. It, it's gross. It, it's gross to experience it. And it's awkward to kind of figure out a way to fasten it to your shirt or a uh, uh, junky old somewhat torn up um, uh, button up shirt to, so you don't damage your regular shirts. The, the experience of going through that um is yuck, yucky not fun um that period the recovery i got the tube out the following tuesday basically because we'd gotten like the levels of drainage had gone down considerably in terms of how much stuff was coming out um that said as you can tell from the the, the bandage back there there's like still stuff draining out of it basically more or less for another week we kind of figured out a situation of um putting a piece of gauze to the, the um to by where the port was and taping that as you can see to the side of my head um is it elegant no does it work yes um have i gone like and it was worked out well enough that by Wednesday, no, not Wednesday, but like by Saturday, by Saturday, I felt well enough and the amount of stuff oozing out was low enough that I felt like I could go out and like drive out and pick up comics or my comics from the comic shop or go to the grocery store and get a new toothbrush because I needed a new toothbrush, that sort of thing. Um, all of these were like, like, Getting the comics was a long trip, but it was relatively speaking, but not a lot of it in like public spaces. Like go in the comic shop, pick up my comics, pay for them, leave. Um, any food stuff I did was stuff like, okay, I've put in a to go order with an app with a pickup. So I go in, grab it, and go, or I go through a drive through window. Nothing where like, have significantly lingering amounts of time in a location with a lot of people. Uh, and that pretty much covers most of the bases. Um, other than that, I've been like, we were prescribed a antibiotic goop, which I've been putting, it's been put on where the port was and on this, and things are healing along nicely. Um, I am numb in my earlobe on this side um feeling in that earlobe may never return um i also was like numb on large portions of the face but i've been re regaining feeling over the past few over the past week or so um shaving goes i mean you tell i'm shaving i'm mostly clean shaven that's because i've been using electric razor i haven't been able to get back to using a safety razor yet i've been using a, a harry's razor um, I'm hoping that by the time I'm returning to work, I'm able to use a regular razor again, because that gets, a, that gets a nice cleaner shave, which kind of looks and feels better in the workplace. Uh, other than that, I've been hanging out at home and getting the bandage changed and watching anime and playing video games and that sort of thing. Some of the stuff I've been able to play, I've been covered on blog posts on the blog. And other stuff will be, like, for example, I finished watching uh, Nadia and the Secret of Blue Water, and along with keeping up with the current anime and watching movies and that sort of thing. And that's, I mean, that's what you should be doing when you're recovering from surgery. You should be taking it easy and letting your body heal. But all of this said, I am glad that the two sides of my face are generally together. Um... The little bulge, I, like, there had been like a sort of on this side of my face had been a little, had caved in a bit. Not caved in is the wrong turn, but like it kind of sunken in because there hadn't been the um, uh, tumor there anymore. 
and it's kind of even back out to this side, which is also nice. Uh, again, and as far as what was extracted, current results of the biopsy, which we were finally able to do once it was removed, were that the assessment of the tumor is benign. So as things currently stand, no plans for chemo or anything like that. The doctor is going to talk this over with a few of his colleagues because this is a having it in this area is relatively rare, but based on the lab tests, I am knock on wood feeling good that we're done. And again, next week or a week or so, I should have finally received the Polymega and I've gotten it set up and we'll be able to give you my assessment on the unit. And that'll be a to that's a topic for a future video. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.